In ancient Rome, soldiers were actually paid in salt. It's where we get the word salary from. It's also the origin of the phrase, is he worth his salt? Jesus uses salt in his Sermon on the Mount and also uses light. He says to the Jews, if you're not going to be the salt, if you're going to lose your savor and your flavor, what good are you? And if you're going to light a candle and put it beneath a bushel basket where it can't be seen, what good are you? What do these two analogies have to do with one another, and what is Jesus trying to say? Well, the light is pretty simple and pretty practical. We're to be the light of the world. We're to be his, his voice, his word going out in the world. We're his hands, we're his eyes, we're his feet, we're his mouth, we're his tongue. And the light of the word needs to go out through us. So why would he light us up in our spirit and then have us put a bushel basket over the top of it and hide it from the world? What value is that? It's not of any value. But what about the salt? What is this deal with salt? How does salt lose its savor, lose its flavor? There's really only one of two ways. You see, salt is a unique compound in that sodium chloride make a perfect marriage in that they share a single ion and it makes it incredibly, incredibly stable. You can't you can't pollute, you can't uh, degradate, you can't infiltrate uh, poor elements into salt in its crystalline form. In order to pollute salt, you have to dilute salt. You have to dissolve it in, like in water. And once it's dissolved in water and weakened, at that point, you can introduce other things into it that would cause it to be unsavory. Not necessarily tasteless, but distasteful. Some things, like in Himalayan salt, some elements, minerals, add flavor and enhance it. But there are other things like boron and magnesium that could actually cause salt to really be disgusting. And in the sense, one of the things that can happen when you dilute salt down into its into a, a solution, when the when the water evaporates off, it can carry away the salt and leave a white substance that looks like salt, but it's not, and it doesn't have the taste. It can't flavor food. It can't preserve food. It's worthless just to be trampled. Um, so what does the analogy mean? Well, the Lord's saying, if I put you Jews, if I put you into the world to carry my image, to carry my message, to be my chosen people for the world to see the glory and the richness and all that I am, and you dilute yourself with the world. You pollute yourself with the world and you let other elements of the world come in to where they don't even see my goodness and glory in you. Matter of fact, you mock me. You display a false image of me. You blaspheme me. When you dilute down my word or you dilute down your life or you dilute down your flavoring of my creation, all of creation screams, not just intelligent design, all of creation screams Yahweh in the sun rising in the morning and the, and the, and the flowers and the seeds that burst forth from, into life, from death into life, that visual 
a, a representation of like a resurrection. All of creation reflects him. And we're supposed to accent that. We're supposed to flavor that. We're supposed to be part of that as we move through this world. People are supposed to see Jesus Christ and him crucified in our lives. We're supposed to enhance that, be part of that. If we dilute ourselves down and then let the world come in and pollute our lives, of what good are we? When we do that, that light that he has lit in us gets covered up by the poor elements, by the dilution and pollution of his word and his spirit in our lives. We've let the world overtake us. This is not our home. We're supposed to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We're supposed to be this clarion voice, this visual image of him in this world to the lost and the dying. We can't allow our witness which is not our testimony of what happened to us 30 years ago. Our witness is what's going on with us right now in him. We can't dilute that. And we can't let it be polluted by this world. If you look so much like the world that nobody recognizes you as a believer, if people are surprised when they find out you're redeemed, You're deluded. You're polluted. You've lost your savor. And Jesus says, what good are you? Let's don't smother the light of the light that he's given us. Let's don't put it under a bushel basket of deluded, weak word and polluted lifestyle. Let no one ever be surprised you're a believer, you're redeemed, you're washed. Let your light shine for all to see. Amen. Indeed.